Well, with me now, the Labour MP, Rupert Huck, and Freddie Gray, Deputy Editor of The Spectator. Freddie Gray, do you feel the Trumpification of British politics here? Well, I never quite know what people mean in Britain when they talk about the Trumpification of British politics. I, I, I mean, I think... Shall I tell you what I mean by that? OK, yes. Right, he says something deliberately provocative that yes. he knows will create a reaction, um, but he also knows that there will be a reaction to the reaction that will be beneficial to him. So he, he trolls, then doubles down on his he trolls the original... Political yes, it's, it's political media. trolling, which is what Trump does all the time. I think I'm in a very small minority of people that thinks this wasn't actually a very cynical strategic masterstroke from Boris Johnson. I think he dashes his thoughts off on his column. Uh, I mean, last week in The Spectator, he was writing about how he enjoyed seeing his au pair naked. Uh, no one picks up on that. He's someone who speaks his mind. So it's just careless. Well, there is a similarity between Trump and Boris in that their popularity is based on the fact that they appear to say what they think. Whether they do or not is a different question. But that's a Trumpification to a certain extent in that they both are popular because they seem to talk plainly. Rupert Huck, do you think this is... Trump, Trump effect, Bannon effect? I do. I think it looks like for Boris, opportunity knocks. He was kind of out of the headlines for a couple of weeks, so he's propelled himself back in there. This story is not going away. And it's this thing about kind of not taking stuff seriously. You know, the old Boris of old, oh, sorry, I just shagged your wife, didn't realise. Oh, sorry, you know, that kind of with a bit of a... I'm not sure that language is OK at this time. <laughs> I don't know about the lawyers. Let's not have any more of it. This <laughs> is okay. a but, Trump vacation right there. <laughs> you know, that Boris of old, it used to be mildly amusing, the stuff about the, whatever it was, piccaninis, watermelon smiles. I mean, it had a disturbing undertone. But I think this was deliberately calculated, actually. And this idea that sort of... It, but you can just brush it off. So, so is it more fool those who fall for the trap to respond? You know, and should I do you just think ignore there's it? a difference between this and the previous stuff? Obama is a Kenyan, uh, the EU is Hitler. Because I think he's done this on purpose. And you just said in that report he didn't meet with Bannon. There's counter. I mean, it looks to me like this was put in the grid when he had that meeting with Steve Bannon. I, th I think also we should distinguish between. I mean, the, the more trolly aspects of the Trump campaign were saying some Mexicans are rapists or. Uh, let's ban all Muslims. And, and that, that was a, a trolley play from those guys. But Boris here is taking a liberal position that he supports the right to wear the burqa. But he also wants to be able to say that he finds it silly. And that's, that's not the same as what Trump was doing in 2000. Which would be fine if he just said it's silly. But he didn't. That's the point. He used offensive language that he knows resonates with a lot of people because a lot yes, of people don't like the burqa. Including a lot of Muslims who, who say equally, if not more offensive things about the burqa. Yeah, but I don't think it's about the burqa anymore. This is about him and his naked ambition to get his grubby fingers on the keys of number 10. So he doesn't mind do, being a disruptor well, on the way to do, do, you agree, do you agree that this has become a proxy war now for leadership, you know, in terms of who's piling in on each it side? It certainly has for the Tories, but the Tories don't need any excuse to tear themselves apart over Boris Johnson versus Theresa May, they're going to do that over something, and I suppose they've just jumped on this. Um, I, mean, he... and I think there's equal cynicism from the people opposing but Boris. Does, as... But does this damage him or help him? With the public? No, with the, with the Conservative Parliamentary Party and then the Conservative membership. I would say with the Parliamentary Party at the moment it seems to be harming him. With most people I would think they would be on his side. I mean, it's just divisive wherever it plays. It is divisive. And, you know, he's, he, he was the worst Foreign Secretary ever. I think that's... Uh, undisputed for someone like Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe he made her situation worse he sort of reconfirmed what the Iranians accused her of he got her an extended sentence and the family certainly are furious about that so this slapdash way of of acting um, you know it's not a good look and it might work for as you say playing to the gallery the right-wing Tory membership but it's not a good look for the country isn't there also an issue here though that you know that all day we've seen Conservative MP sort of dismissing, supporters of Boris Johnson, dismissing that there's any harm. When the truth is that, you know, there will be kids or adults who now think it's fine to shout letterbox, mm. bank robber at any woman in a burqa. And he's legitimised that, hasn't he? I mean, totally. We're in a divided country anyway, post-referendum. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's normalising racism. Well, I mean, a lot of people think that the burqa is, is, a, is a sexist thing against men and women. And that's therefore... a side issue. I mean, it I may mean, well be, and that's another debate. The question is offence and, and, and abuse, isn't it? That's what Brandon Lewis promised to stamp out, abuse of Muslims in the Conservative Party. Isn't this abuse? I don't think it is abuse in the same sense of shouting at someone shout in the street. At somebody in the street. He's not shouting, there was a he's not shouting that at the street. I think all election candidates had to sign up to a respect pledge to promise to not um, undermine other people and blah, blah, blah. It's out there. It's quite publicly known. 
And they promised to sign up to the Nolan principles of selflessness, integrity, honesty, and all those things. He smashed every single one. And he's enjoying it. That's it. He's but loving it. Isn't the danger, though, that... I don't know he's enjoying it. I, I mean, if, if you think we are in a sort of an Americanization of the Conservative Party, aren't we also in a sort of a populist era for the left as well? And that British politics is now divided between populist left and populist right. I mean, I think and that's just bad for politics, isn't it? People are less tribal. People, um, you know, we live in an age of social media. Putting an X in a box every five years doesn't appeal to people anymore. But I think it's dangerous what's happening. If you look at the context of what's happening elsewhere in Europe, be it Viktor Orban or uh, the Gert Wilders in Denmark, a long list you could construct um, I think Salvini a, in Italy. So another, I think at this moment problem is it is that, dangerous and anti-racist should stick together. But very often the people who talk most about polarisation and division in society are the people who do it the most. I mean, if you say to anybody who thinks that the burqa um, is an absurd thing, that you're a racist, then you are actually polarising. The thing is, every time something like this happens, there's a rise in all types of hate crime. I mean, I've had it myself as an MP to my parliamentary office. We had an uh, Islamophobic package sent. It was at the time that that Kill a Muslim letter was doing the rounds. It resulted in my office being cordoned off as a crime scene, men in hazmat office uh, in suits crawling around. The lad who that opened that package had to be taken to hospital because it was the same week as Salisbury and you don't take any chances. But do you think so the outrage is generated from a paragraph in a Boris Johnson's column or is it generated from people like us having this debate for three or four days? The thing is it normalises and it sort of legitimises this kind of thing, which we've seen since the weekend of the referendum, since that Thursday. I think that weekend there was a well, huge spike in hate Let's crime. stop talking about it. Thank you both very much yes. indeed.